the firefighter of today is seeing much less fire than the firefighter of yesteryears. One of the biggest issues that we have is trying to adequately train both new recruits and veterans in live fire training to make sure they're prepared. So the systems of Drager cells range from very simple fire training systems and much more complex and large systems. If we're talking fire, we're talking both class A, which is wood-fueled fires, and we're talking class B, which is propane-fueled. What we want to do with in training is really try to provide good realistic fire behavior training. One of the best ways to do that is by using class A fuels. You know, we're producing real legacy fire scenarios where you have the heat, the smoke, and the capability to flash over uh, that they're going to see out in the real world when they respond. The, uh, the Draeger Phase 1 is a flashover multi-level simulator that's really a fire behavior laboratory. The Phase 2 is typically, Draeger has a 40-foot container and it's a fire set in the back of the container uh, where actually we take and move in on a fire just like we'd be entering a structure. Phase 3 is the uh, backdraft simulator uh, which ultimately causes a backdraft which is a explosion. Phase four is a garage. Phase five is a multi-level uh, training structure, typically two levels. They go up to three and four levels, really represent um, either a small commercial structure or a small home. The phase six gives the opportunity for firefighters to experience long hallway pulls. It's an 80 foot from the entrance to the fire room. So they, they extend hoseway long distances while performing other functions such as search and rescue and searching for hidden fires. The price point of the phase five is about, I'd say one third of what the price point is of a steel or brick and mortar burn structure. If you have damage to a concrete building or a metal building, it's very difficult to recover from that. They're, they're containers, so you can build as big as and small as you want to go. There's just anything a fire department wants to put into one of these systems can be put in, and quite frankly, it can be changed. And then the training provided by the certified instructors extends the longevity by doing proper fuel loads, ventilations, door openings. When we work with the customer, uh, we primarily go through a classroom session, then a live fire training session in each of the burn rooms that are inside. So propane versus wood, propane obviously allows you a, a, a less exposure environment to carcinogenics and smoke, and it allows for lots of sets and reps without having to clean pallets and reload wood and all those kinds of things. So that's a mobile live fire training unit. Uh, they come in various sizes, 30 feet, to the larger ones that are 50 feet. Uh, there are primarily propane. Uh, there is some versions of Class A, but the, the original MLFTUs were propane. They have one to three burn rooms inside of them, as well as other props such as ventilation, Denver drill, movable walls. Just all kinds of different things can be done in there. And again, it's up to the customer, whatever they would like to have that fits their region or their needs. So the mobile live fire training unit is really a way for us to think a little bit outside of the box and actually take that bigger, more realistic burn room in a trailer so that the department can actually move it around. One of the biggest things that I think that we all need to look at is availability. So what we're seeing uh, with, throughout the fire service, at least in North America, is more local training. If we think about the tutor, it's really designed for a smaller fire with the ability to demonstrate the use of fire extinguishers. When we move up to the System 64, now we have a four foot by six foot burn pan that we can put a number of different props on that interchange and allow us to have a little bigger fire so now I can actually get fire departments thinking hose attack versus extinguisher attack. Yeah, there is a large variety of props available for the System 64 from a car to uh, what soon will be a readily available half-ton truck. Uh, we do a propane tank, we do a barbecue. And what's nice about that, it's something that I could roll out of the, uh, the garage or storage, set up and immediately go to work. And if you had a special need, we'll actually customize a prop to meet your needs so you can fight that type of fire. In addition to that, we have um, what's known as the quad, which is a, uh, a much larger pan where we put kind of industrial props on top of that, such as flange fires. We also are very big at Draeger into interior gas props. So we've got couches, beds, 
all sorts of um, interior props that include rollover props with, with propane. G-Pod's a little bit of a different product. It's kind of one of those specialized products. It was originally designed to meet the requirements of the industrial side of the market and really for confined space. And what that G-Pod does is allow people to think about confined space, how to rescue somebody in a confined space situation, Outside of that, we also do things like the maze, which we had at FTIC this year. You know, these mazes, what they call training galleries, uh, offer a fire department a, a lot of options. It's SCBA confidence course training. There's some entanglement training issues in there. It provides some air management training so they learn how to control their breathing when they get in these tight spots. But it really just builds the firefighter's confidence in being in a restricted passage, confined area. Depending on how custom that gets, allows the opportunity to throw lights and sound and heat. It takes like five seconds to move a panel out. I can change the full path. I can change obstacles in there. It can be a very simple process to get through it or it can be a very difficult process, so if you will, basic to advanced. It's always a new experience every time they go in. Service is a big part. It's available with everything that we do, and we're always willing to, to go that little bit extra to make sure that what they need is what they get. We've been committed to firefighter safety ever since the first BA that was invented. Drager really just is involved in the whole picture of what needs to happen for training and safety for firefighters.